Hi, I'm Adam Taylor with ITS. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to configure LandSchool for a VDI environment. So LandSchool supports two different kinds of thin client environments. The first one is terminal server. So with terminal server, you are connecting to a server remotely through remote desktop, and therefore you can access all of the things that are on that server, like specific applications, uh, generally speaking, the server can support quite a large number of concurrent remote desktop sessions. And really this just allows you to, you to connect to specific apps on that server using your standard desktop. Of course, it's your standard desktop PC that's the client, so you can also have your own software installed locally as well. When you connect to the server, you'll have a remote desktop interface, and then you'll be able to load any of the applications that are installed on that server within that desktop interface. Now the setup method for this for LandSchool is detailed in the LandSchool manual. You can find it under Thin Clients. And this uses a specific type of client, Terminal Services Client. And you shouldn't have too many issues setting that up with those instructions. What we're looking at today is the other kind of Thin Client environment. This is VDI, Virtual Desktop Interface. And these are true Thin Clients. So this means that the machine you're using as, as a terminal has nothing installed on it and you can't install anything onto it either. Some examples of this would be Citrix Zen Desktop and VMware Horizon. Now when you're connecting to the VDI server, you're actually loading a full virtual desktop. So we're talking about a desktop operating system and you can have multiple images with multiple things installed on them. For example, you might have different images for different uses, different images for different labs, or even different images for different people. An example of this is something called delivery groups. This is where a user can log in and the group that they're in will determine what images they can load. For example, a member of the student group will get the student image with student applications. A member of the teacher group would get the teacher image with different applications and so on and so forth for the other departments. Now this correlates quite nicely with LandSchool with its three separate software components, student, teacher and tech. The main problem that we have with LandSchool natively in a VDI environment is that each of these images are loaded from a random pool. For example, you'll have hundreds of identical student images and you'll pluck one at random when you log in. Now this means there's no consistency in the naming conventions and this causes problems for LandSchool as we have no reliable way of consistently grouping the machines. To get around this, we use a login script with three separate parts. Now crucially, in order for this to work, you will need to be able to read the terminal name, the NetBIOS name of the client machine within the virtual session. Now there's various different ways you can do this. In this instance, we're using Citrix. Citrix Zen Desktop has a utility called push client name, and this will cause the terminal name to be fed through Citrix and appear within the virtual session under a special key called volatile environment. Once that data is in your virtual session, we then use this script to pull that information out and transpose it over the two locations that LandSchool looks in to identify each machine. So as we can see here, we've pulled in the terminal name But if we take a look at the machine itself, its name hasn't changed. Now the script will write that client name data and put it into the two locations that LandSchool uses. There's one 32-bit location and one 64-bit location, as shown here. And these can be found under HKEY Local Machine Software. The second set of locations are used for inventorying and reporting. Now both the tech console and the report server look in a different location to the LandSchool teacher. The reason for this is they don't actually look within the LandSchool folder, they're looking at what's called the msinfo file of the PC. This is essentially a full comprehensive inventory of all the hardware and software that defines that PC, and this is a native component of Windows. 
Now within the Windows registry, there's two locations under HKEY Local Machine System. One of these has the true name of the PC as it's defined, and the other is a temporary location that we can overwrite. Now MS Info uses the temporary location, and we can write over this with any information we like without causing any perpetual changes to the machine itself. We can see these here as computer name and active computer name, and it's active computer name that we're going to be overwriting with the client terminal name. This active computer name field is what's also used within the LAN school report server as we can see here. And this means that you'll be able to run various LAN school reports off of your terminals, such as being able to see who's last logged into it, the duration of programs being run, and also the utilization of the terminals itself in a real world term. So this can be quite useful information just to see which terminals are actually being logged into and what's being used. Now that we've swapped the machine names around and the reporting names around, the third part of our script will be inspecting a CSV file that we've created and swapping out various bits of information by matching the terminal name to a channel number. And this will allow us to pull information from that CSV and use the setchannel.exe to write that to the local client. So here we can see that the script is targeting the first column, which is the client name. And this will correspond to the client name uh, information we now have in the registry. And then the second column is the preset channel number that's appropriate for a static environment, just like you would with a normal PC. So the script is gonna pull that information from this CSV file, which you can find here. We've saved this to CLS, but you can save it to any location you wish. Just make sure that it's consistent across all machines. It will then check to see if this terminal exists in the CSV file, which of course it does. And then based on that match, it will find the channel number that corresponds to it and then use that information in setchannel.exe to write that to your local client. So just to go through that workflow again quickly, it first searches for a match for the client name, which you will find. It will then match that up to the channel number within the CSV and then it uses that channel number in the setchannel.exe utility to overwrite this value here, which is the local channel number of the student client. So in doing this, the name is swapped out as it appears in LAN school, then fed back to the CSV file to find out what channel it should be in, and then finally running that utility to set the channel. And this means that all of the LAN school teachers and students can see each other on the same channel too. So as a complete workflow, the user will log into Citrix or VMware and the appropriate golden image will be pulled down based on their group. The script then runs and swaps out the name of that machine with the terminal name from the registry. The same goes for the active computer name for reporting and the tech console. And then it'll match that client name to the CSV file, uh, which will then find the channel number and then launch the set channel XE to put that channel information into the client. Uh, you can also use class list now as well because we're now in a consistent static environment. And then finally, once you reboot, all of that temporary information is flushed, which means that none of these changes are permanent. And that's it. That will allow you to use LAN school natively in a VDI environment without any further changes required. It will also mean you will be able to use the software fully with all the features and no concessions whatsoever. I hope you found this video useful. But if you do have any questions, please do drop us a comment below or drop us an email at info at its-group.com. Thanks.